Dan Bongino has been a leader in trying to help build conservative platforms that people like me and, and pretty much every other conservative voice out there that, that all of you listening are, are familiar with, want to hear more from. It's because of people like Dan who are leading the charge on this that we've had those opportunities and trying to build and trying to make a conservative media where we're not just all looking at each other fighting over a tiny island. We're actually expanding and building out. Well, as you know, Parler has come under direct assault by the tech titans, the tech oligarchs. And Dan Bongino is with us now to explain exactly what's going on. He is. Well, Dan, first of all, thank you for joining. You all know he's the host of the Dan Bongino show. Dan, what's your relationship with Parler so everybody understands this? Uh, I'm an investor, so I, I own um, roughly 8% of the company with uh, three others. And uh, listen, we're under a withering assault. Uh, you know, the, 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 what's happening in front of the media, in front of everyone else, is about a quarter of the story. And, and you may say to yourself, well, what's happening? I don't know. You know, maybe people have been busy this week and are missed it. It's certainly possible. I doubt it. But. Uh, we are a social media alternative to Twitter. We were the fastest growing and I believe largest uh, free market competitor uh, to Twitter. So that was before the free market dissipated this weekend. Uh, we had about 20 million users. We were exploding. We were adding about 500,000 new users a day um, in Amazon, Apple and Google. And what appears to be a coordinated effort effectively wiped out parlor.com, uh, wiped out our servers, took us down off the web, took us down off the app stores and everything else. Now, we'll be back. I want to be crystal clear. We'll be back up hopefully by uh, tomorrow, maybe the next day at the worst by the end of the week at parlor.com. But um, it's they, they basically wiped the company off the face of the earth uh, because they felt like it. There were no principles behind this at all. And behind the scenes, it was even worse. We had basically every significant vendor we have uh, just canceled on us at the same time, some of them leaving really damaging conditions that they're going to have to answer for uh, in, in their wake. What 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 do you mean? Give us get to the specifics to, to the degree you can, Dan. I know there's probably some you know sensitivities and limitations here, but when you say yeah. other vendors, because we've all we all know about the the tech oligarchs, but I mean you have legal, you have other people that are that are you're you're working with on a professional basis who just said we won't take the heat. Um, yes, lawyers quit. We've had uh, under pressure, of course. We've had lawyers quit. Uh, we've had tech companies quit that are smaller than Amazon and Google, but significant in and of themselves. Um, one of them was an SMS provider. One of the benefits of being on Parler is we don't mind your data. So we don't sell you. You're not a commodity on Parler. Uh, we don't mind your data. We have no way to mine your data on Parler. So Buck Sexton posts something and then the keywords are uh, whatever, you know, medication for blood pressure. And you say, hey, I'm blood Buck Sexton. I'm on medication for blood pressure, which you're not. But I'm just saying uh, we don't sell that to companies that sell blood pressure medication. We don't. We don't mine your data. One of the casualties of that business wise, which is fine. That's our business model. That's what we choose is, you know, we have no way to authenticate you because we don't have a data mine to see if you are, in fact, a real person. So we asked for a phone number. That's why. And some people don't like that. Um, but we asked for a phone number to authenticate who you are um, or an email address in some circumstances. Well, one of the companies involved with the authentic authentication of the phone number, which ironically would have made it easier, just abruptly canceled on us and left the horror show in their way. Um, again, that's why I say like it, behind the scenes, the story's 10 times worse than it even is in front of the cameras about what happened to Parler. And I want to be crystal clear and anybody thinks and any other social media companies out there um, who think this can't happen to them, not only can it happen, it will happen to you. Um, and, and if you think it's just a matter of, oh, well, I've got my own servers and everything else, I'm, I'm sorry to break your delusion, but the left is already preparing to come after ISPs, internet service providers, to make sure your website's blocked. It doesn't, you be on your own server, that's the only place you're gonna be. So again, all these companies out there, you know, are good, good for you. I mean, we're all about the competition and everything. But everybody's celebrating the fact that they think they built a fortress. If you think you're going to somehow fortress your way out of this and not fight back legally and, and get these companies sued and broken up and get Section 230 rewritten in a way fair to everyone, you're insane. You're out of your mind. There's no way to fortress yourself off from the totalitarians mm -hmm. ever. And there's never been a way to do that throughout human history. We're speaking you to Dan to Bongino. Fight. He's the host of the Dan Bongino Show, and he is a, a, a partial owner of Parler. And, and I hope everybody, especially when Parler.com is back up on, on the web, at least, I know there's going to be other hurdles to this, but on Parler.com on the web, people should sign up, get an account and be able to follow, follow Dan, follow me 
Um, Dan, what is the explanation? I mean, are, are you in contact or are, are parlor representatives in contact with Amazon, with with, you know, uh, F- Facebook and, the, and these companies about what the, wh- what's their justification for this? Or is it just a fiat? They don't even try to justify it. Well, they 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 do try to justify it, but their justification is laughable because they're pretending to apply a standard. The standards exist. What they're basically saying is, hey, listen, uh, we don't like the fact that some content on your website uh, we deem violent, which, by the way, we don't like either. And we have terms of service against that. So what, what's happening is companies that specialize in boycotts um, on, on Twitter and elsewhere, leftist companies or people, I, I shouldn't say companies, but people specialize in boycotts are screenshotting every piece of material you see on Parler um, that may violate our terms of service or rules that's violent. And they're sending it to Apple and elsewhere. And you may say, well, that sounds fair. If violent content's appearing on your site, um, then you, in fact, should be taken down. You, you sure about that? You sure you want uh, to listen? Violent content is against our terms of service. But that same violent content appears on Twitter and Facebook. You want to know why? Because they're deemed platforms by the government. Platforms, not publishers. If you openly advocate for violence in the New York Times, they are, in fact, a publisher. The New York Times can be sued. They, they, they surveil their material before it goes out, edit it, and put it in a paper. We are not a publisher. We are a platform. We do not surveil our users. There is simply no way humanly possible that Twitter, Facebook, Parler, or anyone else on a platform, not a publication, can possibly remove preemptively before it makes it onto the website any content that violates their terms of service. It is not possible. It is possible to remove it after it's reported, and it's possible to remove it after some of our jurors. We have a jury system in Parler, but it is absolutely impossible, and anyone telling you otherwise is simply lying to you. The rules have not been applied evenly to Facebook, Twitter, and us. They just came after us because they think it's a conservative company. That's the only reason. Dan, what can and people listening to this? And they're we're all asking this question um, because you know I, I've been I've been advocating for a long time, especially this year for because I, I saw this coming. Not the the way it's happened, but I knew that you know the big tech censorship was getting worse and worse. I'm sure you've been dealing with you know demonetization on YouTube and de- you know they they do they play these these nonsense games these tech companies all the time and it's always against conservatives and it's always just meant to to hurt our side and they pretend that as you said they're applying rules but the rules are totally uneven what do we do now right i mean the democrats are about to take power across the board in the federal government what can we do there's an excellent article i read and forgive me i can't remember there was about a week ago every this has been a rough weekend i going through a medical thing right now and there's just a lot going on in my life but i don't know if it was that american mind or american greatness or whatever but the article was asking exactly this question buck well how do we fight back the time for you know chatting about fighting back is is over we actually have to take process oriented sound legal and other mechanisms strategic mechanisms forward to preserve the right to speak freely well, one of the things we can do that the left has been doing to us for decades is we have to start imposing actual financial losses on the left, something you just mentioned, whether you knew it or not, uh, or implied by your comment. They've learned to demonetize people on YouTube. In other words, to impose financial losses on you, me, and everyone else. Boycott people, do whatever they may do. Well, it's time for us to return the favor. Keep in mind, I'm suggesting process, not chaos. Why are you on Amazon anymore? You have to ask yourself that Amazon, which randomly just decided to wipe us off the Internet this weekend. Why? It's not about us. I've asked myself this question. To be fair, I was on Amazon up to last week. I would use a prime account once in a while, buy stuff. Why are we doing that? Why are we on? Why are we posting on Twitter? And listen, I, I get it. This is not for everyone. But pick a platform, either Facebook or Twitter, and stop posting. I'm not even asking you to deactivate your account. Just stop posting. Pick one or the other because you may say, well, I don't want my voice to be silenced. I've got a show. Fine. Pick one. I'm off Twitter. Mark Levin is off Facebook. I mean, pick one or the other and just stop posting. Just stop. watch their daily active users collapse and them have to answer to their shareholders or answer their publicly traded companies. We have to impose real financial laws. Why are we buying Apple products? I have an iPhone. It's my last one. Why are we doing this? These companies hate us. They're using the proceeds from our wallets to finance attacks against our ability to speak. And we're financing it. Why are we watching videos on YouTube? Just go to Rumble. And disclosure, I have a financial stake and I'm an investor there too. That has nothing to do with what I'm telling you. Watch it on Rumble. Watch it anywhere else other than YouTube. I don't care. That doesn't discriminate. 
but we have to impose real financial losses. And until we do that, this argument is entirely BS and academic. Dan, we also just want to say uh, thoughts and prayers to you, man. We know you've been in, in a fight for your health recently, and we know you're going to win, but I, I know it's a struggle, Thank and you. uh, you're going through a lot, and you're carrying a heavy burden. But everybody listening to this appreciates, and me at, at the top of the list, appreciates what you're doing and backs Thank you up 100%, and, and we want to help however we can. Well, can I just add one more thing, please? Parlor will be back up by the end of the week, maybe in a couple of days. Please, I'm begging you, go to parlor.com. It's P-A-R-L-E-R, not O-R. Please. And just open up an account. We need your help. It's not if we go down, everybody's going down and we can't do it alone. I can't be a man on an island here. We need help. Parler.com, everybody. P-A-R-L-E-R.com. Set up an account. You can follow people. You don't have to post, but a lot of your favorite people are already there. Dan and me among them. Dan, God bless, man. Thanks for your time today and good luck in this fight. Thanks, Buck. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Hey, Team Buck, thank you so much for watching the first on YouTube. If you like this video, please click that little thumbs up button so then it will log as liked. And also, if you want to see more great content from the first, please click subscribe.